who was Isaac Newton? What are the things he contributed to this world in the space of ideas? Wow. <laughs> uh, who was he? He was born in uh, 1642 in, uh, and near the small town of Grantham in England. In fact, the house he was born in and that his mother died in is still there and can be visited. Uh, <clears throat> his father died before he was born. Uh, and his mother eventually remarried uh, a man named Reverend Smith, whom Newton did not like at all, uh, because Reverend Smith took his mother away to live with him a few miles away, leaving Newton to be brought up more or less by his grandmother mm -hmm. over there. And he had huge resentment about that his whole life. I think that gives you a little inkling that... Uh a little bit of trauma in childhood, maybe a complicated father-son relationship can be useful uh, to create a good scientist. Could be, although this case it would be right, the you know, absent father, non-father relationship, non -father. so yeah. to speak. Gotcha. He was known as a kid, little that we do know, for uh, being very clever about uh, flying kites. And uh, there are stories about him putting candles and putting flying kites and scaring the living devil out of people at night by doing that and things like that, making things. Most of the uh, uh, physicists and natural philosophers I've dealt with actually uh, as children were very fond of making and playing with things. I can't think of one I know of who wasn't actually. They're very good with their hands and whatnot. Uh, he... Uh, was uh, his mother wanted him to take over the manor. It was a kind of farming manor. They were the class of what are known as yeomans. Uh, there are stories that he wasn't very good at that. One day, one of the stories is he's sitting out in the field and the cows come home without him and he doesn't know what's going on. Anyway, uh, had relatives and uh, he manages to get to Cambridge, sent to Cambridge because he's known to be smart. He's read books that he got from local dignitaries and some relatives. Uh, and he goes there as what's known as a subsizer. What does that mean? Well, it's not too pleasant. Basically, a subsizer was a student who had to clean the bedpans of the richer kids. Okay. Right? Uh, that didn't last too long. He makes his way um, and he becomes absorbed in some of the new ways of thinking that are being talked about on the parts of Descartes and others as well. There's also the traditional curriculum, which he follows. And we have his notes. We have his uh, student notebooks and so on. We can see gradually this young man's mind focusing and coming to grips with deeper questions of the nature of the world and perception even, and how we know things, and also probing and learning uh, uh, mathematical structures to such an extent that he builds on some of the investigations that had been done in the period before him to create the foundations of a way of investigating processes that happen and change continuously instead of by leaps and bounds and so on, forming the foundation of what we now call calculus. the calculus. Yeah. 